In Southeast Asia, there are more flavours than a mango chilli dipped in chocolate. And the expat scene is no different. Now, in the heart of the Philippines, we find a unique species, often colloquially referred to as the Americano. These fascinating creatures, unlike the natural flora and fauna, are recognised by their peculiar rituals and distinct mannerisms. And they come in all different shapes and sizes, with ingredients ranging from a British crumpet to a spicy Korean kamichi that sounded Italian. Fuck me, pull your Never mind. So, without further ado, let us observe these majestic beings in their natural habitat. <laughs> so. All jokes aside, what are... What are... Sorry, sorry. Sometimes I just can't help myself. What are some of the foreigner archetypes that one might come across in the Philippines? First up, introducing the retiree. The seasoned beach bum and the undisputed king of early bird specials. Armed with sunscreen, a hat that's seen more sunsets than most, and a knack for haggling, these guys have traded their pensions for pina coladas. If you like pina colada. Next up, we have the backpacker. A walking contradiction of wanderlust and a tight budget. Sporting a backpack a well-worn travel map, and an inborn knack for finding the cheapest accommodation in town. Oh, splits ain't me awesome. And they're here to explore every nook and cranny. That is good, yeah? And of course, here comes the womanizer. Strutting through the city lights with a cologne that basically doubles down as pest control, armed with a repertoire of pickup lines, and this suave charm that's almost as polished as their collection of heartbreak stories. And then, in the corporate jungles of Manila, behold the businessman. Suit game sharper than a Filipino blade, with a laptop as their Excalibur, and a vision to turn every single island into a thriving enterprise. These guys don't vacation, they conduct business with a side of sunburn. Now, venturing into the tranquil realms, you will find the off-gridders with a bamboo hut as their fortress, coconut water as their elixir, and a wardrobe that really embraces the phrase, less is more. These people have swapped chaos for coconuts. And lucky last, lurking in the shadows, you find the dreamer, or as I'd like to call them, the underachievers. Armed with grand visions, incomplete business plans, and a track record of starting things that they never really finish. They're not just dreamers, they're professional imagineers. Now, let's dive into some real talk, shall we? Today, we're going to be tackling a touchy subject. In particular, the different types of foreigners that you might encounter in the Philippines. There's a whole mix of people, each with their own life experiences and their own perspective when it comes to living in the Philippines. And it's just started hailing here. I hope the roof's all right. Anyway, what was I saying? Anyway, let's, let's try and ignore that. Now, here's the kicker. Most people tend to base their opinions on just a couple of things that they've witnessed, whether they be good or bad. They take this tiny snapshot and run with it, swearing by it like it's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's making any noise. Yeah, that's, the, that's what rain and hail does. Uh, so here's the deal. 
People's past experiences and the time they spent in the Philippines usually shapes how they see that world. And unfortunately, many are quick to judge based on a handful of either positive or negative experiences. They take this tiny little snippet and they swear up and down that it defines the entire experience. Then comes the verdict. Is the Philippines for them or not? It's like building a house of cards on a gusty day. These one or two moments become the foundation for sweeping judgments. What they saw becomes their reality and they choose whether to embrace it or not. In a nutshell, it's a reminder that perspectives matter, life experiences, both past and present, paint a very nuanced picture of your world. So the next time you hear somebody else's take on the Philippines, maybe just take it with a grain of salt. It's not the whole story, it's probably just their chapter. So lately we've put together a pretty detailed video on the whole idea of the power of suggestion and how that can encompass somebody's mind and trap it into a very hypnotic state. If you haven't seen it yet, then it might be well worth a watch if you're interested. And I'll link it in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. So let's just dive right into our discussion, which involves what it's like to be a foreigner trying to live a life outside the West and specifically in the Philippines and navigating the delicate balance between opportunity and responsibility. And what do I mean by this? Well, now as you've likely observed, the Philippines certainly boasts a diverse mosaic of individuals from all corners of the globe. The globe and doesn't have corners. Now as foreigners, I believe it becomes imperative, given our circumstances, to cultivate a profound sense of responsibility and maturity in our approach to life in this foreign land and, more importantly, in all facets of everyday life. Now, let's just swiftly bypass the, the backpackers and the retirees and the businessmen, groups of people that are most commonly painted as, as benign contributors to the Philippine narrative. I mean, retirees, for example, with their fixed income, just bring financial stability. Backpackers also contribute to tourism, so long as they stay out of trouble. Businessmen creating jobs and prosperity for the Philippine economy all seems like a pretty unambiguous and positive force, right? Now, I am willing to acknowledge, of course, that this, this surface level analysis does mask a few crucial realities, and we will always be presented Within these groups, stories of, say, benevolence versus business exploitations, and, for example, tourists, responsible behavior versus disruptive behavior. There will always be good bosses and bad bosses. Good Aussies, bad Aussies. And with the womanizers, let's just leave them right out of this. That's not something that I wanna even touch on or tackle today, if maybe ever. So look, just for this video's sake, we'll set aside some of these complexities for today. But in general, a big fat thumbs up to the groups of people just mentioned. I've got no qualms with them whatsoever and honestly, neither should anybody. So here's the scoop, right? One of our viewers dropped a very reasonable question and they asked, how do we plan on supporting ourselves financially in the Philippines? They can see that I'm clearly not at retirement age, I don't have a pension. Now, that's the kind of inquiry that sparks a real conversation and we really appreciate this kind of detail. This is something that all foreigners should be asking themselves if considering such a giant move or a grand just leap of faith, for lack of a better term. Now, cutting to the chase without divulging all of our private financial secrets, we've got some investments in Australia that are holding down the fort. Now, guys, over in the Philippines, Jan and I are really working hard to try and nail down some sort of game plan that can generate some uh, local income for us. But right now, our major focus is getting the house over there squared away. And that's exactly why, to answer your question, why you don't see us there in the Philippines yet. Because we're orchestrating this gig from a distance and Anyone who's done this 
you more than well know that it's certainly no cakewalk, even if you're present in the Philippines. Now on that note, a massive shout out to our A-team family there in Orma and just a stellar builder who have really taken it upon themselves to assist us with bringing our vision to life. We couldn't do it without you guys and the gratitude is just off the charts. Now look, mine and Jan's philosophy really is that no matter where you choose to hang your hat, your home is ground zero for success. Now let me dissect that a little more for you. We believe that your home is truly the bedrock and it's the foundation. So Jan and I believe that without having a, a stable base, anything that you try to focus on doing, whether it be setting up a successful business or a thriving YouTube channel or, or any kind of venture for that matter, your energy into anything meaningful will literally be like trying to herd cats. It's just chaos, pure chaos. See, the foundation of your life, the family home, is where we believe the seeds of stability are sown. If the very core of your existence, your home, is marred by chaos and instability, how can you possibly expect anything different in your ventures in life? You know, it's like trying to build a skyscraper on quicksand. With a shaky foundation, you'll never be able to hold anything of value. So before you think about constructing anything concrete out there, I think it's imperative to solidify the foundations right beneath your very feet. So for us, it's about having a place to really call home, not just four walls and a roof, just a random box. It's, you could call it a fortress of stability. See, I think that without that, you're just stuck adrift in life's turbulent sea, and we're not about that life. We're about building something solid, something that lasts. And that starts with a place to call home. It's clear as day, really. So guys, let me just be 100% upfront and honest with you and lay it all on the table. This house, cash paid. No beating around the bush. We used our own savings to make this house happen, okay? No loans and no debts hanging over our heads. The water tanks, already sorted. So you could say that water is basically on the house. And as some of you may or may not be aware, I'm also a solar electrician, qualified by trade. And I've already sent up majority, probably 80% of the gear that I had left over in the shed in those trusty Balik Bayan boxes and shipped it all up to the house in the Philippines. So again, electricity, free on the house. And let me reiterate, again, we're not packing our bags and moving right away. We're tying up all our loose ends here in Australia first because responsible living is a result of smart choices. And most importantly, staying within your parameters. Now, I'm not telling you to ditch your dreams, guys. In fact, dream big. Go as big as the sky. But here's the catch. Make sure you take calculated steps and use them like stepping stones towards your dreams. Don't go making snap decisions that could leave you in pieces or worse, drop a load of bricks on the people around you. See, it's really all about balance. It's about building the life that you dreamed of without leaving a candy trail of chaos and destruction behind you. So. Dream big, but walk steady. See, in, in our eyes, Jan and I, I think that we're genuine off-grid seekers and minimalist enthusiasts, I guess you could call it. Really striving to enhance the quality of our lives, even if it means reducing our income. Again, I don't believe that the two are synonymous with each other. Now, let's shift to a different focus. This is where things get a little bit touchy, but I like to term these people the dreamers, or for even a more accurate description, the underachievers. Now admittedly, this demographic might not be as heavily concentrated as those who really contribute to the uplifting of the Filipino economy and the general society, and for the betterment of the Filipino people. However, they exist, and this is where we need to make the disconnect. And I really strongly urge the Filipino people not to paint us all with the same brush because of the actions of a select few. I think it's a, it's a very common pitfall to make sweeping generalizations of certain types of people based on a few minor experiences. However, I think it's crucial to recognize that these stereotypes don't always reflect the broader reality. So usually, more often than not, these people are individuals who have never really tasted 
the Western-centric view of success in their own homelands. Their life patterns reveal an inclination towards grand visions and fantastic ideas. Yet, they lack the skills and the knowledge for an effective execution. And you'll probably recognize them as those people who tend to be the loudest, right? They make the most noise and seem to be the least grounded. And they tend to sort of leap before actually looking because of the reluctance to put in the hard work. Dreaming big and talking a big game, they usually fall short on actual productivity, often deflecting blame onto external forces. And unfortunately, at times, the Philippines bears their brunt of their unfortunate presence. Now look, if you're a single soul with a little bit of cash to burn and you're just looking for a break, a bit of a hiatus from the Western way of life, hey, go ahead, live it up for a bit. Take that well-deserved break, because you've earned it. However, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard the stories that are circulating on the internet and on YouTube from channels, especially like um, Every Man Has a Story, um, Old Dog New Tricks, which is Paul in the Philippines, uh, even I think Alex Kosh had a couple of videos about it too. He's a new YouTuber from Russia. Also met up with either Paul or Every Man Has a Story. I can't remember. I'll get back to you on that. And just quickly too, while we're on that, big shout out to you guys. You guys have been a great, great inspiration to me and to my wife to pursue this dream. So from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for your content and we look forward to hopefully meeting you when we're there. But the thing is, like I know that I can't compare my situation to theirs because <laughs> I'm 30 and not retired and I don't have a pension. And let's just address the elephant in the room. There are lots of stories of expats coming to the Philippines, leaving behind, say, young children and loved ones, and that alone raises some big red flags for me, personally. Now, guys, feel free to just jump into the comments below and let us know, honestly, how you feel about this and what your thoughts are because we would really, really like to know. But let's be real here. If you're leaving children behind, let's say maybe up to the age of early 20s, let that sink in. Even when I look back about, oh, that would have been what, maybe seven years ago when I was 23, I was this naive, lost little pup just thrown out into the world, out into the workforce, and I really had no idea what I was doing. Thankfully, I had some work colleagues and older people around me that mentored me, but you really realize that it's a dog eat dog world out there and you are kind of on your own. And as, as a 23 year old, you really know nothing about the world. You're still, a, you're still a kid. Now imagine kids even younger than that. You know, blokes leaving young kids behind really raises eyebrows. And if you can justify that, then look, you can just about justify anything to yourself. And this, my friends, is precisely why these kinds of people are the type that tend to start things and never really follow through with them. So look, here's the situation. These, these people, they arrive in the Philippines with no home, no stability. They bounce around from resort to resort, dabbling in various investments without even a proper grasp of the market, which, which is distinctly different to what we're used to back home, back in our countries. And predictably, when things don't align with their goals, that's when the, that's when the frustration starts to set in. You know, and they, they begin to grow impatient. Uh, common in the Philippines, processing times lag, schemes aren't taking off, and products maybe don't sell as anticipated. And the kicker, in the midst of this, obviously the savings, they start to evaporate. Now, let's just do the maths here. I don't care if you went there with $1 million in your pocket, it'll get you somewhere. It'll definitely get you somewhere. But if you're not able to generate an income, eventually that money is going to turn to zero. It might take a little bit longer, but it'll evaporate sooner or later. Now, now let's just picture this. You're Filipina, witnessing your downward spiral, virtually achieving nothing. Eventually, you become this burden or the budlay, which is in their language, a burden. And now who's left to pick up the pieces? She is. It's all on her. She is forced to find a job because 
I mean, guys, you know, you as a foreigner, you can't just stroll into any office or into any labor job and then be expecting a paycheck at the end of next week. It doesn't work like that. That's just fact. So things can take a nosedive very swiftly and Jan and I are more than aware of this. And then, you know, you, you, find yourself, you find yourself back home and if your parents are still around, then they might be willing to lend a helping hand. But what I'm trying to say is that this just turns into a, a snowball effect from traits exhibited early on that cast a shadow on your experiences of the Philippines. And then of course, wonder of wonders, right? These foreigners end up blaming their Philippines for their misfortunes, describing it as a horrible place. But what they actually fail to admit is their own role in the downfall, slamming the country for reasons that might not even be entirely valid. And, and here, this is the gut-wrenching reality. These people, right, find themselves in the Philippines under a guise of wanting to embrace a simpler lifestyle, a, a supposed uh, escape from the complex matrix of the West. And they use this narrative as an excuse to convey their spiritual, mental, and physical disalignment with the Western materialistic complex, done more predominantly than not to mask their shortcomings. But see, here's the saddest part. For most of them, not all of them, but for most, what's the first thing that they do upon their arrival in the Philippines? They see the exchange rate, don't they? They realize how much more powerful their dollar or their pound is compared to the Filipino peso. And then ideas start to buzz and clank around in the head. Then they dive headfirst into seeking investments, desperately trying to then grow their wealth, essentially transplanting that very Western mindset that originally they set out to flee from. And, and it's just this colossal catch-22 a perpetual cycle of <laughs> a dog chasing its tail, basically. And see, these are the people that can never find in a piece true, true contentment because deep down they yearn for that elusive Western dream. They, they convince themselves that it will be more attainable in the Philippines because of exchange rates and maybe corruption or whatever they believe they can leverage to their advantage. So see, they, they relentlessly pursue this Western way of life while at the same time projecting this image for the reason of their move being to embrace simplicity. And in the end, they find themselves trapped in this purgatory, no different to what it was that they were trying to escape from back home. Neither achieving a simpler life nor bringing to fruition their materialistic dreams that they so desperately crave. Look, guys, please don't get me wrong. In conclusion, I really advocate for having big dreams. Building that haven in the lush paradise that is the Philippines. Chasing that business or building that YouTube channel. Dream big, but do so with a plan. And most importantly, make sure that you have a contingency so you don't end up marooned, lost, and contributing to the toxic waste that is polluting the beautiful country of the Philippines, its society, and becoming a burden on its people. So as we part ways today, just remember one thing. Never lose sight of who it is that you are. Chase, chase your most audacious dreams, but do it with a sense of wisdom. Evaluate your unique situation, and above all, really resist the temptation to compare yourself to others. Because what leads to one person's success might very well lead to your demise. See, life's nuances determine what works and what doesn't. And it's your responsibility to figure out which shoe really fits best for you. So just take the time, craft a plan, and please don't bring your trash to the Philippines. Infuse positivity and wholesomeness into the lives of the Filipino people. And please refrain from blaming them for your lack of maturity. So with that, 
This is The Castaway Couple, signing off, urging you to embark on your dreams responsibly and leave a positive footprint wherever you go.